Photoshop is not an animation program similar to working in Adobe Flash, but it does support the creation of simple animated GIFs, and I'll show you how to make two types of animations with the animation panel. Now in this particular image, we have some Edward Muybridge stop motion photography, and I've taken the liberty of creating all of the slices of the individual pieces of the donkey on their own separate layers. So what you would have to do is get all the little pieces in order first, each one on its own separate layer, and then what you'll need to do is organize them. So I'm going to click and then shift click so I have all my layers selected. And then I could use my align tools to put them all one on top of the other and then use my image trim option to trim all of the transparent pixels away from the graphic so that the only thing that's left are the actual little individual pieces. Now I need to open up my timeline panel which was already open in the panel dock at the bottom of the screen, but you can always open it through the window menu, timeline. There's two types of animation. There's the frames based animation, which is what I'm going to show you first. And then there's timeline based animations. You could toggle between the two by clicking this little button here, it just toggles you back and forth between timeline and frames based. So we want to make sure that we're showing the frames based animation. The next thing you'll need to do is we want to put each of these images into its own frame. So moving the layers onto individual frames, choosing the options menu here, and choose Make Frames from Layers. This will ensure that each layer gets its own frame. Now we still have that original background layer, so we're going to have to toss that in the trash and delete it by selecting it and clicking the mini trash icon so it will delete the frame. So now each one of our layers is on a separate frame within the timeline, but now we need to adjust how long each frame will play before it moves on to the next. At the bottom of each individual frame is an option that determines the number of seconds. You can choose no delay, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 5, 10. You can specify any length in the other. Your frames need not have the same play time, so you can modify them individually, or if they all need to be the same, what you would do is select all of them, click and then shift click. Modify one, you modify them all. So I might want to do 0 0.2 seconds. To preview your animation, you can preview it by clicking the playhead at the bottom of the panel, and this will show you what it looks like. Right now we have the duration set to once. If we wanted to have it play over and over and over again without stopping, we'd choose forever. We're going to make it go three times and then stop, or choosing other some other specified number of times before it stops. I think we should do forever. Now to me, it looks like the donkey is almost bucking backwards, so we might want to try reversing the order of the frames. To do that, you'll select all of your frames, go back into the Options menu, and choose Reverse Frames. Now when we play it, we'll see if it looks like he's kicking a little bit more naturally. When you're finished, and it really doesn't matter which frame you're on when you go to optimize, you can choose File, Save for Web, and just make sure that you choose the GIF option. The file size is determined by the number of colors, so in this case if I wanted it to be less colors, I could bring the colors down to try and get the file size down. If I go too far, I'm really losing a lot of the quality of the original photographic image, so I might need to do something, well, 16 or more really 124, I might as well go right up to 128, or somewhere in between. Let's make it 100. Then all you need to do is save, give your file a name, and I'm going to save it to the desktop with the GIF file extension, and then all you need to do is drag that file into an open browser window and you can see it play. Now if you didn't want the outer edges, which might be changing from frame to frame, so like you see this frame has a black border where this frame does not, you could add something above all of them, some kind of border. So I could select this, create a new layer, and then on that layer I could choose a color, maybe I'll sample a color from the horse, and then choose stroke, make it go on the inside, make it I don't know, we'll guess, how about 7 pixels, 
like so. And then I just need to make sure that that layer is showing on each one of my frames. So to do that, I'll select all of them and then hide and then show the frame so that it's sure to be there on each one of the frames. Now I can deselect my selection, re-optimize my graphic, and that border will be there on each and every frame. Now let's switch over to another graphic and we'll talk about timeline-based animation. So I'll click this button here to create a video timeline. And the video timeline goes from zero to however many seconds the full animation will play. And if you look at your layers panel, you see a duplicate of those objects inside the timeline. So each folder has its own folder, which you can expand to view the contents of. Now in this case, I would probably keep my open original layered file, make a duplicate of it, and uh, maybe flatten some of the graphics and then work with the flattened version, saving my original layered file so that I could always go back and revise it if there was a typo or some other color change needed to be made. So what I'll do here is I would like to create a graphic shape with just the button. And if you hold down your Alt or Option key while you're going into the Options menu and click Merge Layers, you'll create a single merged file from your selected layers. So I'm going to move that outside of that Book Now button. And I'm going to do the same thing with the circles. I want everything inside that layer, holding down Alt or Option, clicking the Options button on the panel, clicking Merge Layers so that I have a merged version of my circle and collapsing and hiding. So now I have this graphic on its own separate layer and this graphic on its own separate layer. And I could actually throw these away if I had made a copy, a duplicate, and I'm working with a duplicate. This sort of simplifies everything while I'm working. And for that matter, I could do the same thing with this one, holding down the Alt or Option key, choosing Merge Layers, dragging that out, and we can toss this guy in the trash too. So we're really simplifying things, but we have saved our original edited layered file outside of this in case we ever need to go back to it. There's two layers that I want to be persistent on the screen. I want the pool photo to always be there, and I want the banner that says Family Cruises to always be there. But what we can do is we can animate the circle and we can animate the button on the timeline. Timeline animations tend to work best if you start with a file that includes some kind of a background, at least one foreground object, some text, and maybe a button. And that's just like a general rule, but of course it could be anything that you need. So for this one, what we're going to do is we're going to make the circle fade into the frame from zero transparency to 100% transparency, and then move it in from the left to the center at the same time. Once the circle is in the center with full opacity again, then we'll bring the Book Now button in. We'll make it blink a few times before the animation ends, and then we can set it to loop so that it will play over and over and over again. Now we have our Timeline Animation panel open, and the timeline length is set to 5. We can adjust that if we need to at any time, but we'll start where we are right now. This little blue button right here is called the Current Time Indicator, and right now it's set to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. It's the very beginning of our animation. If we want to modify any one of the layers, we need to make sure that that layer is selected. So I want to modify the circle first, and with that layer selected in the timeline, what I can choose is to modify its position and its opacity. So I'm going to click on the stopwatch here for position, but I'm also going to click on the stopwatch here for opacity. Now it's added keyframes to that 00, zero marker, the very beginning of my playhead. And keyframes mark the beginning or the end of any change with the selected layer. Since I want that layer to move in from the left, I need to move that layer off the screen to the left. I'm going to hold down my shift key to make sure that it stays in place and then shift it over to the left so it's outside of view. I'm also going to change it from 100% opacity to zero so that when it starts to come into the scene, there's zero opacity and it'll sort of brighten as it flows from left to right. I also want to hide the Book Now button. And if you put your cursor to the left or to the right of the edge of a button, you can actually adjust where that image begins or ends. So I might want to put it at the 2 mark so that it's not even going to show up in the timeline until we get to the 2 second frame. Now I'm going to adjust my playhead 
from 0 to the 2 mark, or right before the 2, right before you see the button, and I'm going to insert a keyframe for both the position and the opacity, and then I'm going to adjust the opacity back to 100%. So it's modifying that keyframe from 0 to 100, and then I'm going to move that selected layer from the left. You might have to use your left-right arrows to get it into the scene. Oops, I have both layers selected, so I just need that one selected. There we go, now I can grab it. Moving it into the scene, to the right like so. So now when I scrub the playhead, we should see that it's moving in from left to right, and the opacity is going from much lighter to here. So it's a blend of the opacity and the movement, the position and the opacity. Now that I'm at this playhead where the Book Now button appears, I can collapse that layer in the timeline and expand the Book Now button. And you can see that that Book Now button has the same options, position, opacity, and style. What we want to do here is modify the opacity to make it blink. Now we've dealt with just symbols or graphics here. The options that you see when you expand any of these layers will change depending on the type of layer that it is. So typically, you can change the position of a layer, you can change the layer's opacity, you can change the position of a layer mask, or turn a mask on or off, and you can also increase or decrease the size. So if you had some text or something, you could make it start off really teeny tiny and then sort of grow in space towards you. But for us, we're just going to deal with a simple button flashing. So right now, we have the timeline I'm going to go back to right where the green button appears. And I'm going to leave it on the timeline just for a couple of seconds. And then what I need to do is create a position, or rather an opacity keyframe. So I'm marking this spot right here. Then I'm just going to go slightly to the right of it. And I'm going to add another keyframe by clicking on this little diamond on that layer. For this one, I'm going to modify my opacity down to zero. So you can see that it looks like it was there, and then now it's gone. Now I can move incrementally to the right and repeat this in reverse order. So I might want to go to the 3 mark and insert a keyframe, and then right to the right of it, so I'm leaving it at 0%, I just want to make it seem like suddenly it appears, adding another keyframe and again changing it up to 100%. So now it's there, it's gone, it's there, I'm going to go to the 4 mark. Now in this case, I could copy and paste keyframes. So I'm going to click and then shift click and choose my right mouse button and choose copy. You could also go to this button over here and choose keyframes copy. And then at this mark here, you can do keyframes paste and it will paste a copy of those same keyframes. Now I can move over to the 5 mark and I'll copy these guys here right-clicking to my context menu, choosing copy, and then here, right-clicking or using this one, keyframes, paste. So we can see that the button is coming on and off screen. I might need to readjust the position of those so that they happen a little bit sooner. Let's go right here. To preview your movie, you can play the animation by clicking the play button here. And if you did need to adjust the position of any of your markers, your little keyframes, all you have to do is select them and click them and drag them. So I just might want to make sure that there's even spacing between all of these. When you're ready to save your graphic, File, Save for Web. Make sure you choose GIF because that's the only one that supports animation. And in this case, you might need to go to the highest number of colors to render it as cleanly as possible. This will mean that your file size is a lot higher than if you had created an animation like this in a program like Flash, but the beauty of this is it's an animated GIF and it doesn't use Flash, so you don't have to worry about people on certain devices not being able to see your animation. You'll click the Save button. Oh, and if you wanted to modify the looping options, just modify it so we would want it to play forever and ever. Click the Save button. Save it. And then you should be able to drag it and drop it into any open browser window to watch it play.